We have never seen this many Cybertrucks spotted at Giga Texas. We can see 12 here. The Cybertruck is imminent. Steven says, after seeing yesterday's FSD version 12 demo, I am doubling down on my prediction of the first Tesla robot taxi happening in 2024. He says that he thinks the chances of it happening are above 80%. My prediction of 2024 has remained unchanged for a couple of years, but the probability I assign to being right has increased steadily. After seeing what Elon Musk has done yesterday, yeah, I think uh, full cell driving is happening a little bit faster than I previously uh, thought. And Elon Musk says they don't get it. And I personally, well, I'm actually happy that most people don't get it because if you don't understand that this is inevitable, that this is actually happening in the future, you will not buy a lot of Tesla stock, which allows me to buy Tesla stock at cheaper prices. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. But once Tesla has robot taxis on their roads, once full cell driving is fully solved, and by that I mean it's safer than human driving, and everyone sees Tesla's driving themselves on the streets and they get into a Tesla and they experience that for themselves, then very quickly, pretty much immediately, the sentiment will change and Tesla stock will rally again, is what I believe. And in the meantime, I will keep buying Tesla stock at these cheap prices. There is a little bit of pushback from Gary about full cell driving. I have always said that Tesla will solve full cell driving first, but that others will get there soon after, one to two years later. Elon's live full cell driving version 12 drive through Palo Alto is certainly amazing, but it doesn't change my thinking. As a long-term Tesla shareholder, I am open and hopeful to being proven wrong. At $240, Wall Street continues to put almost no value on Tesla being the only one who solves general full cell driving works anywhere. I can get to $320 in Tesla valuation with 10 million deliveries by 2030, a 10% FSD take rate, energy and services alone. If Wall Street actually believed Tesla will be the only one who solves general FSD, the stock price would be $1,000 right now, over $1,000. I'm not arguing Wall Street is right. Uh -huh. He's not arguing that Wall Street is right anymore. But at $240, FSD is essentially a free option. So it sounds to me that there's a slight change in his sentiment. It's a very tiny change in his sentiment before he would say things like, um, I have been right in the last few years because full cell driving did not come yet. And right now he's not mentioning that part. And he is saying things like, I'm happy to be proven wrong. He's not saying that Wall Street is going to be right. Elon just said that hardware 4 software will lag hardware 3 by at least another six months as our focus needs to be on getting FSD on hardware 3 working super well and provided internationally. Notice that Elon said at least six months. This could turn into quite a bit more than just six months. So in a very weird way, if you want to experience full cell driving to its fullest and you want to uh, have that experience as soon as possible, you should probably not buy a car that has hardware 4, but buy a car that has hardware 3. But in the long term, you will be better off having hardware 4. Elon Musk says that just designing cameras, uh, designing liquid-cooled computers, and then Designing a high security internet gateway will probably take major car companies about three years. So they should really start now, but uh, they will probably want to use Tesla's online vehicle management system on the server side too. Uh, so I would highly suggest to all of these other automakers, just license the software from Tesla and you will be so much better off. We almost never hear from a shook who leads Tesla's full self driving development. He says this end to end neural network approach will result in the safest, the most competent, the most comfortable, the most efficient, and overall the best self driving system ever produced. It's going to be very hard to beat it with anything else. So, anyone who is not using this system is going to be way behind Tesla. And guess what? No one is doing it like Tesla. And it took a tremendous amount of high quality data from the fleet, a very large amount of compute and a world class engineering team to get to this point. Other automakers also don't really have any of these things, certainly not a combination of all of these things.
This is another big and important development for us Tesla stock investors. This is another very strong hint that the Cybertruck is coming very soon. Look at this piece of paper and pay attention to this yellow line model S3 X Y Cybertruck. Assuming that this is real, why do you think they would put the Cybertruck in there? It's probably because they are getting ready to deliver them soon. And Tesla already has some Cybertrucks that it can certainly deliver. At least if Tesla wanted to, Tesla could start basically delivering them now. There aren't a ton of them, but there certainly seem to be some of them out there already. Because sightings like this are now fairly common. Matthew here says that Tesla has now built 100 Cybertrucks at Giga Texas. And James says, it feels like the Cybertruck ramp is going even faster than the Model Y ramp did. Tom Zhu probably deserves some credit here. Those who said that the Cybertruck is never coming, I would like to hear from them now. Do you still think that the Cybertruck is not coming? Despite all of this evidence? It is crazy, but I think some of them still will say, yeah, it's all fake, it's never happening, these are all fake, these are just production. Uh, prototypes, these are never going to actually materialize in mass production at Giga Texas. Tesla's mega pack will account for 50% of the US market operating capacity at the end of 2024, and James says that these estimates are probably conservative. Troy says that the challenge in Q3 is that most of the inventory is not in North America, speaking of Tesla's vehicles. And in the last five quarters, we had inventories increasing, but this quarter we'll probably see a steep decrease. Asked if Troy is expecting the Cybertruck deliveries to start this quarter, he says no, because the first delivery to a regular customer triggers depreciation costs for the factory and machinery. You don't want these costs in Q3 when production is low, which is why we are likely to see deliveries only to employees. These don't officially count. Troy expects that the Refresh Model 3 will have both the front and rear Giga castings. The old version had none. Until now, only some Model Ys had Giga castings. Why do you think they will only drop the inventory by 25,000? Right now, Tesla actually has a lot more inventory than just 25,000. You would have to multiply that number by a few times to get the actual inventory number. Troy says production is down in North America, but inventory is low, and I already assumed they will sell out. Most of the inventory, 40,000 Model Ys, is in Europe where it's not needed. Sales in Europe are already maxed out, says Troy. There's a good point here that Troy is comparing Q4, which is typically a lot higher in sales compared to Q1 or Q2. Uh, but then Troy replies by saying that if you compare, for example, Q2 and Q1, you can already also see a small decrease between these two quarters in Europe. However, there is one important thing that you also have to understand. Earlier this year, it was officially confirmed that Germany was in a recession. And Germany is the most important market for Tesla in Europe. So I wouldn't rush really to make any long-term conclusions here. Once Germany starts doing better, I expect Tesla sales to also pick up. In about two weeks, we will probably have undeniable proof pretty much that the Model 3 refresh is happening very soon because in two weeks, we will have model breakdowns in terms of exports from China to Europe. And if we see zero Model 3s in there, that just tells us very clearly the Model 3 refresh is imminent. Tesla China recently started insurance subsidies for Model 3s. However, on August 26, says the Tesla China analyst, the inventory of Model 3 has been completely sold out in China. And by that, he really means the inventory has mostly been sold out. There are very few Model 3s left. Looking at tesla-info.com, there's still some Model 3 inventory left in China. But if you look at the number of vehicles here, it is pretty low. Uh, I'm not really sure how reliable this inventory tracker is in China. One reason why I am so invested in Tesla stock is because of Tesla's innovation. And this, this is a good example of Tesla innovating. This is a Cybertruck, but it is wrapped to make it look like a green Toyota Tundra. 
how many other <laughs> wraps will we see? It looks like it is easy to make these different wraps. So I think this will be an option that you will be able to purchase probably. Otherwise, I don't think we would have seen so many different wraps. We have seen the F-150, we have seen the camo, and we have seen this wrap as well. So many different ones. Ideally, you could just create your own picture, but maybe Tesla will just give you multiple options. I'm not really sure, but this could also increase Cybertruck's profit margin because you can charge quite a bit of money for this. And if Tesla has figured out a mass manufacturing method for this to make it relatively cheap, this could be quite a big profit center for Tesla. Because if they can do it for Cybertruck, do you think they will also be able to do it for other vehicles? Maybe. We'll see. Maybe the wraps are just for prototypes and for release candidates, but here we can see the Giga Wiper in action. It looks pretty functional, looks proper, looks fine, but it's definitely a Giga Wiper. Here is a list of all of the countries where Tesla has already surpassed last year's sales by the end of July. As you can see, it's a long list. Elon just replied to this tweet, which shows you how easy it is to get FSD beta on your car. And he shared some important information here. 11.4.7, which is mostly but not entirely AI, is with Tesla employees and a few external users. So it's already mostly AI. In other words, we might see a pretty nice improvement when it comes to driving with this next update. Rolls out to anyone who bought FSD in the North American next week. So it could take a few weeks or a month. Although the live stream was not delayed by a lot, so maybe it's actually happening pretty soon. Omar here has a pretty good point. I like how Tesla is showcasing women using their products on the homepage. Tesla has traditionally been much more male-oriented in their marketing, but in my experience talking with people on X, women actually love their Teslas even more than the men do. And from my experience, that is generally true as well. I know of a few... Um, Tesla owners in person and the women just seem to love it just a bit more. That's just my and Omar's experience. Maybe your experience is different. Please leave a comment down below if it is. One of the presidential candidates wants Elon Musk to be his presidential advisor. That's interesting. I'm not sure if that would be great for Tesla because that would make Elon probably hate it even more. But that is not to say that he shouldn't do it. I'm just saying <laughs> there's going to be more hate towards Elon if he chooses to do it. This is just corruption in plain sight. Check this out. The DOJ, Department of Justice, is suing Elon Musk and SpaceX for focusing their hiring on US citizens. But you know who else advertises that only US citizens can apply for a job? The Department of Justice. You can see right here, conditions of employment, US citizenship is required, and you can see this is from the Department of Justice. This is seriously not okay. To sue Elon for the very thing that you are doing yourself right now, currently. This is just corruption that you can easily identify and see. How much more corruption do you think is going on at our government? I mean, a lot of things you never hear about, you never see them, but this... We can easily double check, it takes one minute and they're still doing it. So how much more corruption do you think there actually is? I think there's probably a lot. Before Elon Musk did the FSD version 12 live stream, he was on a Twitter space hosted by Omar and there were some very interesting points discussed. I highly suggest that you listen to the whole thing, especially if you are into more technical details. And at the same time, I will also play this FSD beta 11.4.7 drive. This is about one hour of footage. I will speed that up. And I also cut out some parts from that Twitter space so that it's easier to listen and you don't need to listen to long silences. Keep in mind that this newer version is still a new build and Omar says lots of false slowdowns and stops as is often typical in new builds. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the V12 beta. Um which is just, uh, you know, full AI end-to-end, -end, um, you know, photons in, controls out. You know, why go end-to-end? -end? What's the advantage of, you know, moving control and everything over to neural nets? Well, I mean, this is basically how humans work. So um, we're, we're sort of photons in to, uh, you know, motor movements out, to uh, hand and foot movements out. 
and uh, uh, so that's kind of what works best um, as opposed to injecting a bunch of heuristics. Um, now, and I should say that, you know, this does take a lot of training compute. Uh, I think we will probably spend on the order of $2 billion this year on training compute. Um, you know, a bunch of that is acquiring hardware, so that'll last for some number of years. So it's, uh, but, but, but we'll probably spend a similar amount next year, uh, if, actually more next year probably. So this is, it's not, it's not like, uh, you know, <laughs> walk in the park here. Uh, it's a, it's a lot of data and a lot of training. Um, but it's, it's, it's a, it's a very few lines of actual code. So it's, it's really, it's really quite kind of remarkable. Um, uh, it's, I mean, we obviously have a, a proof case in the form of humans that use biological neural net and eyes to drive. And so cameras and, uh, digital neural net, uh, is kind of the, the solution to the, is, is the, the correct general solution to self-driving. Um, now the, the thing that's kind of, uh, a little weird is that it's actually hard for the car to explain what it's doing. But, but, but then the same is true when you are say driving in a taxi or an Uber or something, the, you don't actually know what the driver is thinking. You just know what the driver's track record is, um, you know, uh, four or five star or whatever, and that they have a lot of experience. And so you kind of trust that experience to, that they, uh, that, that they'll drive well, but you actually don't know for sure when you're in a taxi or whatever that, that the, that they're going to drive well. Um, that's kind of how it will be for, um, you know, FSD 12, uh, so like really even like the, the rendering of what's on the screen is an approximation of what the car is thinking, not exactly what the car is thinking. Um, but it's, I mean, it works really well and it's super smooth. So, wow. Um, yeah. You know, Elon, everyone's been talking about the GPU shortage. NVIDIA just reported monster earnings. And yeah. you've said that FSD is compute constraint. It is. What do, you, what do you mean by that? And uh, what will Dojo do to help that? Well, um, we do all of our training, or well, almost all of our training, I should say, on uh, NVIDIA hardware. Um, you know, we all, we're also bringing up Dojo, and we're doing um, some amount of training on Dojo. And we'll do an increasing amount of training on Dojo. But... Uh, we, we, we have bought a lot of NVIDIA GPUs um, and we can intend to continue uh, buying NVIDIA GPUs in addition to Dojo. So, uh, like it, it, really, it seems like the, the, the world is going to be very compute constrained uh, for, for a while. Um, with, for, for, and, and, like, I don't know, I think I kind of... Like I think almost almost all of the, the, the data centers around the world uh, will, will over time be AI instead of conventional CPUs. Uh, or most of the like if you, if you were to say like what what percentage of of the uh, energy is being used for neural nets is gonna over time I think be probably eighty ninety percent. Um, wow. So I think that's why, why NVIDIA has such a high market cap, um, is that people see demand being very substantial for a long time. So there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's room for both in, uh, NVIDIA and, uh, you know, Tesla Dojo, because the demand for neural net training and inference will be so high. It is so high. Um, although I, I do think that, that we're trending towards, you know, this year, there being uh, obviously a severe, a severe silicon shortage this year, um, but then at, at some point this will become the choke point will be uh, voltage step down transformers um, because you still have to go. From, it's already happening. People were telling me today huge wait times on transformers. Yeah, I mean that's the, the irony is that you need transformers for transformers. Um, <laughs> So it's like, you know, a GPT is a, you know, uh, most of the compute is autoregressive transformers. Uh, the the uh, neural net, like the 
software version of transformers and then you, you need a voltage step down transformers to run the neural net transform the software transformers um so anyway transformers for transformers um so that so yeah that the, indeed there is a shortage of of the lead time for uh voltage step down transformers is already i think on the order of a year and and getting longer um and and that's not an industry that's used to rapid change uh they're used to pretty steady states uh, stuff and then then going beyond that if there i think there will be uh, an electricity shortage um so just just generation capacity especially if if you have uh, if, if you need the compute to be in one place, which for training you you need the compute to be in one place because the GPUs, which is actually the wrong word, uh, it, the, the Google term is actually better, TPU, a tensor processing unit. Uh, <laughs> GPU means graphics processing unit, so um, we're not doing graphics. In fact, the yeah, absolutely, <laughs> the, the H100. Uh, uh, actually, the H100 technically has a VGA port uh, for boot up, but it has no actual high bandwidth. Uh, graphics output uh, capability, um, so it, it's weird to call something graphic a, a GPU that when it actually can't do graphics. At Tesla, we're, we're bringing up a, a, a ten a ten thousand unit H one hundred cluster right now, actually. Um, and and by the way, it's not it's wow. not a trivial thing to bring this up. It's not like hey, turn on the machines and everything just works. It's uh, we're we're going twenty four seven on this and with a, some very competent people, and it's a, a struggle to. Uh, get uh, 10,000 H100s to work, like very difficult. Um, and to get all the networking to work and the c cabling, um, the, you know, the, 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 this is... Are you using NVIDIA's networking solution there? Uh, for, for this system, we are using InfiniBand. Um, but nice. but there's, there, there, and, and this is somewhat an esoteric debate of like, what's better, like, you know, Rocky, which is basically Ethernet, advanced Ethernet, or InfiniBand. Um, I think the general trend for, if you say like much larger scale things, might be more towards uh, sort of uh, Ethernet uh, or very high speed Ethernet, which is, you know, ROCE, Rocky. Um, and uh, there's also a shortage of <laughs> InfiniBand uh, equipment. Um, in fact, that's often more of a shortage than the GPUs. Um, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so the uh, for, for training, you, you need a dense cluster of computing. Um, we've, there's a massive amount of communication between the, the GPUs or really the neural net uh, computers. Um, for inference, you don't have to, you know, the inference you can run on a, like, I don't know, like an eight node stack or something like that, or even less. Uh, just like in the car, you know, we, you know, we we're running inference with a basically a hundred watts, um, hundred watt, uh, and, and we're running inference at eight bit. Uh, and is that a hardware four hundred watts? Uh, hundred a hardware four is is more. Um, so, are you going to be driving a hardware three or hardware four car today for the live stream? Hardware three. Oh, okay. Is there uh, is hardware four not supported yet? Uh, not yet. It will be. Um, Does the higher resolution pose a challenge with the data set and everything? How do you manage that? The we we do we do have to retrain if, in order to use the high res high resolution because of the fact that as photons enter controls out, that photons are different. Um, you're getting a different bit stream right. with the hardware four cameras than with the hardware three cameras. In FSD 1147, they had the side blinker camera, and people noticed it started looking better. How did you achieve that? Is it just better post-processing or something like that? Or maybe something neural-based? We, we can do a lot of post-processing. Post um, yeah. So, it, in fact, it, yes, we, we did improve the post-processing. The, the thing with FSC that I, that I noticed since I've been using it for God knows how long now, that there's two very distinct variables. There's a safety variable and there's like the comfort confidence variable. And I'm wondering, how much are you seeing with V12? Because we know that the, the software is super safe. You know, I feel very safe using it. But there's like these kind of these little moments where, say, somebody that's new to the software is like, oh, that was kind of inhuman. Oh, that was weird. Is V12 making significant improvements on that side? I, I would love to hear a little bit there. Yeah, well, I mean, you'll just be able to see it. Um, 
because I'm literally just going to, I mean, I, I guess what, what right. I'm going to do is like run Paul all the time. I'm just going to uh, uh, drop random pins um, on the map, just like scroll on the map, drop a pin, then drop another pin, then drop another pin. So it's not, you know, it's not like a pre-programmed route. Um, and uh, we'll just see what happens. Um, and, and, you know, this there's a reason we haven't released this to the public is because we, you know, that's, <laughs> there's still times when it goes wrong, but you'll see that it's extremely smooth. I mean, this um, is very, very smooth. Yeah, and YouTube says you should watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching this Elon Musk interview, watch this one first. My name is Mal Post. Just like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.